All right. Good morning, afternoon, Facebook. Wherever you are in the world, could somebody give us a quick sound check? Hey guys. Peters. Should we do the la 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 la? I'll stick with check, microphone check, la, one, la, two. La, la. <laughs> All right, Christine Frank Taylor, you just commented live. Are, are, can you hear us okay? Good morning, Sarah. Everyone good? We are on and you can hear us okay. All right, I need to get my hair flip going in the right direction. Mike mm -hmm. is here. Awesome, we're good to go. Hi, Insta Live. We're streaming over there, Whole Fit Talks. Have my hottie here with me today? No, I'll say that. No, I just mean you're hot. You just got out of the sauna. That's true. That's true. Talking about your looks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you're pretty hot. Um, you did just get out of the sauna. I did, yeah. yeah. We um, we purchased an infrared sauna about two years ago. Two years, ago, two years two. ago, and recently I've been reading quite a bit of research on the um, the power and the benefits of using the sauna right after a workout. So that's something that actually you have a little bit more of a routine with, um, and have been doing a lot more of. And well, today I worked out in the sauna. <laughs> so. <laughs> You did this yesterday too, right? You were doing. Yeah, I was doing. I was doing uh, a lot of a lot of calisthenics in the sauna uh, today. Yeah. Um, Do you want to tell them about your your little badge of honor? Well, no, no, we'll get into that later. It's not. It's not a big deal. But no, today I just thought I like to kind of test myself, and I hate being cold. So instead of just sitting there and scrolling through my phone and listening to nothing, basically, uh, I thought you know what, I might as well get a workout in right now and kind of. Really not in the mood to do anything else. So, well, I'll just share with you what happened yesterday. He came up asking me to roll lavender on his arm because he burnt himself on the metal part of the sauna doing push-ups. So, <laughs> how'd that lavender work? It worked out right. Yeah, if anyone wants to see it, it's right there. Yeah, seriously, that's like pretty decent. Yeah, it's good. But I'm gonna wait a little bit. You ruined my you ruined my uh, my story because I could have used that as a good war story from work where I ended up saying. A house full of kittens and children and orphans and everything else, but now no, it was just me being stupid doing push ups in the sauna. <laughs> yeah, well, you can still tell that story. Not I anymore. Have some Not anymore. All right, well, welcome, you guys. I don't know if any of you are brand new. Say hello in the comments if you are. Um, we're excited to have you here live. Um, but we have about 100 people on live, and um, we will have last week's episode uploaded to iTunes. Uh, tonight, along with this one, so you'll have brand two brand new ones for this year. If you have, if you didn't catch the one with us live last week, um, I will be on next week. Yeah, with my Mister, and we're going to talk about um, on next week's broadcast the trigger habits for healthy living. So this is actually a topic I've been thinking about a lot because I've been working on a a new uh, daily wellness blueprint for our whole fit oil community and. Um, I'm actually, I'm not going to launch that until closer to May because I know there's going to be some pretty cool products being launched at leadership this year um, in doTERRA land. And um, I have my, my hopes on a product that I know we're going to need for this daily wellness blueprint. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is um, I've been thinking a lot lately about what creates health. And it's so overwhelming for a lot of people. A lot of you are, are maybe at the beginning of your health journey and you're feeling this way, right? Where there's so many areas that you could focus on and it's tough to know where to start. And so sometimes you just end up in that stuck situation and you know you, you don't really do anything because you feel overwhelmed. And so a topic I've been thinking about lately is what needs to happen in order for that thing to happen? So what is the trigger that you have in place in order to, for example, uh, work out 20 minutes a day or take your vitamins or drink more water? What are the backup rituals, the little rituals that happen before the other thing happens? So we're going to share some of our favorite ways to automate a healthy, a healthy lifestyle in our home. Uh, we, we do things a little bit differently individually, yeah. right? And so Chris is going to share some of his his rituals that he has in place each day. I'm going to share some of mine. If you um, follow me on Instagram, I know I'm, I'm streaming live there right now. Check out even my Insta story this morning. I actually shared with you one of the ways that we 
um, automate a healthy morning with our girls so that they go to school happy and healthy. And, it, and it's an easy way for me to make sure that these simple things happen each morning, such as taking the vitamins and the specific oil blend that I roll on them every morning before they go to school. So the, the point of this is next week's is going to be a great topic for you guys if you have ever felt or are feeling kind of overwhelmed with where you're at and you know you want to make some changes but you don't know where to start. I like to say it's like the stop start effect where you start something and then oh I missed it so now I'm going to go back to square one again and, and start over and you feel bad and you get that guilt going on inside your own head and everything else and it's if you're going to tune in, it's uh, it's going to be a good podcast. It's going to be a good thing. But guys, don't get too excited because it's not going to be mind blowing. It's just the simplest little things possible, and that make a huge that will make a big difference. And it's stuff that we've both together learned over the years. I mean, we were doing some pretty radical things before, and it was just all noise. And mm -hmm. as you get older, you just realize that ah, it's kind of pairs things down a bit. You realize that it, it, it becomes more simple, and uh, I guess it's a long-winded answer. So tune in next week. No, you know what? You just said something really important. It had me thinking about why we overcomplicate things. Because um, you're right. You're, I mean, I tend to be. I mean, futuristic is one of my strengths, and I, I tend to always look at what's coming down the pipe in terms of um, healthy living protocols, products. Uh, this is why I was one of the first in Canada to integrate doTERRA because I saw like this, this absolutely is going to be a key tool for people to unplug themselves from the disempowering healthcare system right now and to be able to put themselves in a position where it is there for them when they really need it and not what they're depending on, right? So I saw that with doTERRA and I, I tend to, oh, but because of the way that um, and, and the things that I read and what I'm thinking about, we tend to do a lot of things in our home that are um, very alternative. And, you know, we have over the years tried yeah. a lot of different things. And I love what you said there because at the end of the day, here's what we realize. Um, when we are making things a lot harder than they need to be, it's actually a form of sabotage. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying, we're almost setting ourselves up to, to fail right out of the gate when we make things way too hard. So we want to, we want to just share, you know, some of the simple things that we do that are really effective, the, the simple things that lead to really big changes over time, okay? If the sound is echoing, um, sorry, we've got mics on and we're, we're in my loft, so sorry if the sound's not super great today. Um, over on Instagram, it might actually be more of an echo because the mics aren't streaming up there. Okay, so got some great questions from the queue today. Uh, Jill, can you pop up the link for people to add their questions or topic suggestions? I, I love to pull from this and sometimes there's a topic that is so great and deserves to have a little bit more uh, airtime because I know it's, it's one that a lot of people are thinking about or struggling with. So um, today I'm going to open up with um, one of those types of questions that I think a lot of you are probably experiencing. Was that product placement? No. no. Just life. Do you want some? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay, so question number one. Hi, Ange. First, I wanted to say that I look up to you a lot and often find myself saying, what would Ange do? <laughs> That's sweet, maybe dangerous. <laughs> in situations with my doTERRAPIS, thank you for all that you do. I'm new in my business and just had my first builder come on board a couple months ago. I'm wondering what you do when you welcome new builders, especially when you were just starting out. I feel as though I've set them up with all the necessary resources to launch their business. So now I'm wondering how often to check in with them. Would you recommend weekly phone calls or questionnaires to fill out? I want to be available and supportive, but I don't want to scare them away by constantly checking in. When do you let them just do their thing? So. This is a very important question for any of you who are building doTERRA because you are in a business where success here is unlimited. You will have people who will join your business that tell you they're going to you know, be your best builder. They're going to build a diamond and they, they want to work with you and partner with you. And I mean, everybody says that because it's such an amazing business. But a lot of people don't realize that 
this, if, if they've never been an entrepreneur, entrepreneur before, they probably are not willing to put the kind of work into a business and a vision that it requires. So I love this question because you all, um, what, what basically starts to come into play for you as a mentor is actually your own uh, worth and actually your, your recognition of what um, it looks like when somebody is going to actually walk the talk. Okay, and if you're brand new to to coaching other people in this business, it's it's hard to differentiate that. And so you're you're going to go through a, a season in the beginning of your business where you show up for people and you say yes to being available to people, even if um, they're not doing the things right. And I did this too. And I have to say, my first year to two years building DoTerra, I did. I overgave of myself and my time and um, I did it because I knew I had to create something that, you know, the structure, the infrastructure for our team to go big. Um, and with people, I had set up, you know, weekly calls with everyone saying they were going to do the business. And I hit a point in my second year in doTERRA, you remember this well, mm -hmm. you know, I did not leave my office for yeah. Days, I would be on the phone with people, coaching them, trying to be there for them, basically running a call center because everybody was telling me they wanted to do the business, right? And so I had to go through that to learn what I'm going to share with you right now. That you must qualify people for your time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because everybody will say they want to do this because it's so good. But not everybody is going to be willing to put what it takes into this business um, because this is a business of service to others. You will have people who will come into doTERRA because it's the most appealing network marketing opportunity in the entire industry right now and will be for a long time. Um, because of the products, because of the compensation plan, because of the, the lifelong residual opportunity for people, it is the number one network marketing company out there. So everybody's looking at doTERRA and everybody's saying, oh yeah, I'm going to do it. But if you have somebody who doesn't have a heart to serve people and to to work hard on their business. If you have somebody joining you that, you know, their goals are, are all about money, they're not gonna do well here. And they're gonna quit as soon as anything starts to feel like work. Because a lot of people unfortunately think that's what network marketing is, is just money. becoming an overnight success yeah. and it's about money. And I love that doTERRA does not celebrate that. Like imagine how incredible it is to have the number one network marketing company does not celebrate millionaires, doesn't hold up big checks on the stage at convention like all the other companies do, even though th th there is more impact and wealth and abundance happening within doTERRA that is not the North Star, right? So what I wanted to, to address here, and then I'm going to have Chris actually share um, just some ways that they might take somebody like a new recruit on the fire department um, you know, through their journey or how they might identify somebody who's going to be a, a true leader within the fire department. So the first thing I do, and I want to say this, I, I discourage people from enrolling to do the business right away. And I shared this on past broadcasts. This is my personal approach, okay? There are present designers in Ontario like myself who, that's all the people with business builders. I, I really want people to have a time period where they understand the power of the oils and develop their own routine with them and their product knowledge before they ever start doing this. So that's why I discourage people from enrolling as a wellness advocate right away. So I'm going to come from that approach that somebody enrolls to do the business, but they start as a customer, okay? I want them to have at least three months as a customer where I um, – and you – you could use various things to qualify somebody through that initial customer period to better understand what they're going to do as a business builder. This is why this is so genius, you guys, because if you have somebody who says to you, I'm going to do, I'd love to do the business with you and um, I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to be your best builder. If you start them as a customer and you start, um, qualifying them in some way to understand where their passion lies and, and what they're doing around their excitement with the oils, 
that's somebody who's going to do really well in the business. The best leaders in my team and in my leadership team are people who are passionate about life. They, they are the people who are out there sharing their truth. They give more than they ever take. Um, they, they have that servant heart, right? They are the ones and, and they, I mean, honestly, I think well over 90% of the most successful leaders in doTERRA started with no intention to do the business, right? So you have to understand the heart of where um, the true leadership in doTERRA is that they need to start as a customer first, and this is where you can qualify them. So, you know, one great tool, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> one great tool that I use, I'm going, I'm looking at how to integrate this better into our team education are the modules that doTERRA has already created on their website. How many of you have actually gone through these? I'm going to actually, I'm going to post it um, within my own team and ask how many leaders on our team have actually gone through all the education modules that doTERRA offers on product knowledge. So if you, if you want to find these, you'll go to doTERRA.com under wellness advocates. Um, and then I believe it's under the living section. You scroll down and you'll find there are, there are about 50 different modules on product education, right? Great place to start a new customer and say, hey, you know, this is what I want you to focus on over the next three months. And you, you do a, a lifestyle design with them and you help them create a ritual with their oils so that they're feeling good. They're feeling healthier. Therefore, they're in a position to actually build their business with the right energy, okay? So that's, that's kind of step one. Um, is there anything that is a parallel to the fire department with what I just shared, shared there and how you, what's the initial kind of qualifying? Well, I think the, one of the main things is, is what you sit with yourself when you're starting out new. And this could be for anywhere too. It depends how, how passionate or you are about your job. But if you're looking for someone too, that you wonder if they have the stuff, the right stuff or whatever, you're always looking for the little things that that will be small things that become big things later on. You know that are going to work. Like, for instance, one of the things that we always kind of look for in someone that's starting out new is, what are they willing to do? You know, what are they willing to do? The the everyone's willing to be the guy who does the big job all the time and and, and looks good, but. Are you are you gonna are you willing to be the first guy to jump ahead and be like, yeah, you know what, I'll do that total crap job. I don't care. I, it doesn't matter to me. I'll 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 sit back on this, and I don't need to be the guy or the, or the one that that gets the gets the glory or anything. I, I like to be the one that just I'll do whatever it takes. And one of the things is we always say is like, and it's kind of a trick question because there's only really one answer that we always like to hear, and it's um, how how far are you willing to go? How much are you willing to do here? And the right answer is all in, all the time. And any other than that, you don't want to hear for someone new. It's You don't want to hear about, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. What does it take? Whatever it takes. But do you know what that is? No. Teach me. Show me. Uh, I'm going to hang back and listen to you guys. I'm going to watch and see how how things work around here. And then I'm going to latch on to something right latch on to someone that knows what they're doing and I'm going to follow that and follow that path. So I love that. Like you clean toilets for years. I still do. You still do. If somebody comes do. on and they're senior to you. No, I, no, I still do. We had a whole changeover at work where at one point I was the, I was the, the, the senior guy in the hall and my job wasn't to clean the toilets and my, what my job wasn't to do like those, those menial jobs that, you know, people would think. Then something changed, and all of a sudden, overnight, I was I was the junior guy, which meant I was back to cleaning toilets. And I go into work tomorrow. Guess what I'll be doing, guys, at nine oh five a.m. <laughs> cleaning toilets. And you know, I've got eighteen years on the job. I'm forty one years old. I have no problem doing that. And when I do do that, I do it to the best that I can. You know, because it it really it, doing something doing a small menial task like that really makes it when it really matters. People will understand that, wow, he doesn't mind doing a crap job like that. What kind of job is he going to do when it really matters? And it, yes, and it really I shows. Love that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you talk about, you know, like, to get back to what you're saying, um, yeah, like overnight I changed. My role changed. 
and I became the junior guy. I was doing the crack jobs. I had to do the, the menial things. I wasn't the guy in the front of the line anymore. I was the guy grabbing hydrants. I was the one, you know, staying back. I wasn't going in the fire first. That was for the older guy. I was the guy getting the, uh, I was the guy grabbing a hydrant to supply water to the guys at the front. And it was seven or eight years that that wasn't my job anymore. It was, I was the main guy. And you know what? Didn't bother me one bit, you know, because the guys in front of me had earned that right through seniority or whatever reason. And I was just part of it. I was just glad to be part of it. And I love those guys and I would do anything for them. So yeah, just check your ego at the door if you're starting this out. So hmm, I love that. And Tracy Lyman, I love her comment on Instagram. She said the best companies have their CEOs uh, trained from the bottom up. And it is that mentality. And a book that I thought of as you were sharing that was um, by Robin Sharma, the leader who has no title. This is a great book for you guys to read as leaders to understand what to look for in people that you are wondering, you know, how, how do you, how do you understand somebody who's going to do well here and somebody who's not? And so this is why I really feel that first period, period level one for anyone needs to start as a customer, falling in love with their oils, qualify them in some way to show their commitment, whether it's, having them go through all the modules or having them watch uh, one webinar a week from the Empowered Life series, uh, some way to, to really gauge their passion. Uh, Ruby asked, you know, when we're in our first year of our doTERRA business and are searching for leaders and builders, should we still wait for them to go through the three month training? And that is a great question. You likely know at least one or two people in your life that you can gauge passion from and, and you know their heart. I would say reach out to those people right away. Do not hold back. One of the best gifts this business will give you is being able to create a dream life and a dream business with people in your life that you care most about. So don't hold back. Um, if there are people in the beginning of your business that you know their heart, you know, hire for character and then train the skills. Mm -hmm. But don't skip steps. Yeah. Don't skip steps. One of the things... And I, I see a lot on, especially here, is, you know, people will come from a different background, from a management level background or a, or a level like which you came. I mean, you were, you were a longtime manager of, you know, all those stores and everything else. And don't skip steps because this business is different from every other business and every other business is different from this business. Don't just assume that because you have some sort of training or, or background, Take the time to learn this and, and don't skip the steps. Use whatever resources you have. I know doTERRA has a ton of resources out there. Use those resources. Totally. And, and, and take your time with it. Like, again, exactly. again, like, I don't want to make this about myself and, and kind of what, what, where I grew up in the world I grew up in. But, you know, at this point, everyone goes to fire school and some sort of post-secondary education. Well, now it's post-university education. And you have to have like three, four months of schooling where basically you're going into these buildings every day and you're in, they're doing controlled burns and you're learning this and you're learning that. Well, we tell guys that once you get on the job, none of that matters. You have to learn the steps when it really matters. And, and to compare it to Terra, like you're in a new business, you're in a new world. Take your time and learn. There's always people out there willing to help you with those steps. And, then, and there's so many there's so many people that will take the time to teach you that. Again, back with us, you know, there, there's nothing worse than having someone come on who's like, well, I know that. I took a year at school. Right. And yeah. Like, really? Especially when people are promoted in the higher ranks or are different roles within the fire department and they've never actually done the job. Yeah. Right? And that's so. one of the things. And people will look at you um, and think, well, you've never really done that. So they'll, they'll kind of look at you kind of like, nah. I kind of see where your head's at. Again, this is just me talking, and I probably get in trouble for it. But <laughs> no, but a great, a great um, difference in DoTerra is that you cannot really grow this business unless you have started from the ground up, unless you have actually done the things. And I know you can all think of leaders. They, you might even have people in your upline that do a lot of talking and not a lot of do modeling. Um, we all know those people. But the good news is they're not going to hold you back. So don't let that be your story. Um, the book I mentioned was The Leader Who Has No Title by Robin Sharma. 
So when you have somebody that, let's say they started as a customer, here's the ideal flow, okay? You give them three months as a customer. You give them the date three months from now that you um, are excited to launch them as a business because these are people who have come to you saying they want to do the business right away, okay? So start them as a customer, give them their three month date. The reason you're gonna do that is because that's when you have the opportunity to place them properly on your team. So think of that three month incubation period is their time to show you their passion and who they are. And once you know that better, you might decide to put them on your front line. You might decide to put them on your second level under a front line builder. You can decide at that point because doTERRA allows you to move them after that, that first 90 day period as a customer. So that is why, I mean, when I have somebody who enrolls themselves as a wellness advocate um, right away to do the business, that's where I have to really gauge um, I usually will actually just pull up that person's Facebook and I, I'm looking at their profile. We have that gift today, lives are out there and I can look at and really have a better understanding of who they are by the types of content they share. Are they somebody who is openly helping people? Maybe they're sharing recipes and workouts and, and they're modeling a healthy living already. That's a good way for me to gauge who they are. I just look at what they've already been doing before they've ever enrolled. Now if they don't have that kind of a profile, I'm gonna try to set up a call with them once they've, you know, within that 14 day period to better understand who they are. And that's where I'll ask them some questions. I'm gonna share some questions with you guys. Um, but let's go to the point now where somebody has upgraded or they, they've enrolled and they want to do the business. Um, Charlotte over on Instagram, the education modules are right on doTERRA.com. Go to the live section under product, or no, under wellness advocates, go to the live section. You're gonna find right at the very bottom um, a whole bunch of modules on essential oil education, okay? So once I have somebody who wants to do the business, what I first do is I mail them a business package. And in this business package, I have a little welcome insert. I have a copy of the leadership magazine because I want to plant some seeds in their heart of what this could be for them. I give them some teaching tools, some examples of handouts that they could use for their first class in there. And I also plan to, I haven't done this yet, but because these have just been launched, I'm planning to give them a copy of the living guide, the share guide, the build guide, and the launch guide. All in there, those are brand new. You can order them through your back office. I give them that little package through the mail and we schedule our first call. So what I typically offer to somebody doing the business is three calls. Um, and this, this would be after we've had more of a product focused call, like a lifestyle design call. So their first business call, um, what I'm basically wanting to assess is what their vision is for their business, what they're wanting to create here. Okay, so I, I basically am asking them who they are. What are they wanting to put into their doTERRA business? If there's somebody who wants to just casually share the oils, maybe have a class here and there, um, then we might only have one call where I can just set them up for success. Um, somebody who I'm going to have three one-on-one -on -one calls with would be somebody who is planning to really launch their business. They're gonna have multiple classes in their first month. They're gonna have questions about how to take care of people once they've enrolled. They're obviously gonna have questions about how to place people. Um, so you need to understand who they are. Here is my like presidential diamond tip to you guys. Always give them something to do before the next call. This is how you respect your own time. So you're not just gonna get on the phone with everybody who says they wanna build a business. You're going to have your first call with them, understand who they are, what they wanna make out of this, and then you give them something to do, and you do schedule the second call, maybe for a week later or two weeks later, depending on their growth strategy. But before you do get on that call, they need to know that they need to have done something, completed something. And this is this is where it is totally up to you. Um, some of you might have some sort of a, um, a business training, a, a, a business camp, um, some sort of an online boot camp, or maybe it's, it's going through the build guide and completing their, their list of 100 people that they want to invite to the business. It is totally up to you what you want to give people, but the, the important thing is that you're keeping them in action 
and that you're not getting on the phone with them again until they have done that thing because it's something that you have assessed is going to be important for them before the next step, okay? Um, then when you have that second call, you're, you're checking in on what they completed and you're just keeping them in the flow. So here's a really easy way to flow a new builder is connect them to the new tools. So maybe the first thing you have them do is look through the build guide and you might have them complete one section of the build guide and then you have that next call. So that really from call one to call two, what you're trying to assess is their commitment level. Mm -hmm. If they come to you a couple days before that second scheduled call and they haven't done the thing, they're not an engaged builder, you're probably not gonna have another call with them, okay? Um, and there are, there are a lot of ways this continues to, to happen where you're, you're, you're qualifying people for your time. Because remember, even if you are brand new to building your business, you have a lot of value to add to that person. Because you're somebody who's probably done at least one thing in this business that they have not done. Even if you're just starting out and you've never had a class, you could probably share what you're going through right now to set up for your first class with them. So regardless of what level you're at, anything you're offering somebody on the phone is value and it is worth you qualifying people for your time. So let's say they go through the build guide the, by the second call, on that second call, once you've qualified them, now you, you want to discuss their launch plan, okay? So now they're, they're basically uh, letting you know when they're gonna have their first class. The best thing someone can do when they're launching their business is to not have just one class, but to have three or four classes within either a week or a month period, whatever they're willing to put into it. Somebody who's gonna like hit the ground running will do a couple classes in their very first week. And um, basically from those classes, those are the, the, the foundation of what's gonna build massive momentum for them, okay? Momentum is king. You, you need to have a constant flow of opportunities in your schedule to share the oil. So you, you discuss their launch class with them and you also review what their, what their schedule is of classes after that first class. If they're just gonna do one big launch class, and let's say they're gonna invite um, 30 people, 10 to 15 will show up. And again, you guys, the launch guide goes through everything I'm saying right now. So if you wanna go back and take a look at those materials on doTERRA.com, just search empowered, um, empowered success. And that build guide, the launch guide will come up. So I'm reiterating the flow in those guides right now. So they schedule their first class. At that very first class, if they have a good group of people together, the goal would be to book two or three classes off of that first class. That is key. And so from there, you know, your, your second call with, the, with somebody is to review any questions they have to set up their first class. The way that we're growing now, you guys, it's not as realistic as it used to be to go out and teach a class for your builders. A lot of you are growing online now, it's the space people are connecting in. And so what you need to do is to keep things super simple for your new builder. Have them order class in a box and, and basically um, talk through what their first class should look like. So, <laughs> April. <laughs> Most important thing is that they keep it simple. So. A high level tip for you, you're probably gonna wanna record yourself teaching a class to share that with people that don't live locally to you. Now, with Diamond Club coming up in doTERRA, there's gonna be a lot of opportunity for people to get out and attend classes, even if it's not your class, they can go out and see what a class looks like before they do their first class. Lots of, lots of modeling options, but I will tell you this, my best builders didn't wait for someone to come and teach their class for them. They just got out there and did their thing. They got people together around their oil kit, they ordered class in a box, and boom, they, they're off running. Because if you're waiting for someone to do these things for you, you might carry that same mentality throughout your whole business. If you, if you can um, just launch, get yourself into the position where you're like 80% ready, you feel confident with the materials you're gonna present, and you just get out there and do it, you're gonna do really well, okay? 
So after they've had their class, you might schedule the last one-on-one -on -one call with them to go over how the class went, to talk about the people that enrolled, to uh, review how you welcome people. We're really big on this um, in doTERRA. I know within our team, we encourage um, everyone to do some sort of a, a welcome email that connects people to the resources. A lot of people on our team will send out a little welcome package with a usage guide and samples. Um, they'll offer themselves for a one-on-one -on -one call to do a lifestyle overview. Not everyone takes them up on it, so some creative leaders will do a group welcome call once a month, things like that. But you, whatever your process is for onboarding somebody brand new and welcoming them into your community, that's what you review with your new builder. You'll, you, depending on how many people enrolled and what their goals are, you're probably going to want to go over placements with them um, and how to simply structure towards premier rank right away. That is key uh, because if you don't talk about that, they're going to end up just having people on their front line, right? So those are the basic things that you want to go through with a new builder. And then this is the part I wanted to, to basically emphasize. After those three or four one-on-one -on -one calls go, um, happen for their business, it is up to them to tell you and show you what they're gonna do next. Especially show you. Show you, absolutely. And, and that's why I'd encourage you to not get into this- um, mother in Yeah, this overgiving role yeah. or this, this um, relationship with them where you have calls every week yeah. um, that they're not taking action on. I wouldn't get into that trap of setting that up only because you know, you're know you gonna get really frustrated and feel like you're dragging people. Because basically if you set it up, and what I do after those three initial, three or four initial calls, I I have calls with them in their rank up month. So once once they're out there you know, teaching classes, when they're ready to have a rank up month, and I know they're gonna have a lot of action and we're going to um, go over how to place people and structure for that rank. That's when we have a call. The reason this works is because we leverage systems, group support. So how many of you have some sort of a Facebook group that you've created for your, your business team? If you haven't created it, chances are someone in your upline has. You all have people above you who are a presidential line, okay, at some point. So you, you find where that group is and you plug people into that so they're, they're learning together and they're finding their information. One of the number one skills in doTERRA is to be resourceful, um, to be somebody who looks for what they need, who finds what they need and not what they don't need, right? It's not up to you to be providing all of that for them all the time. It's not up to you to inspire people or to motivate people. This business is so simple. It is so simple and we complicate it because we're scared of success and because we don't feel our own worth. That's why we complicate it because we're, we're personally afraid that we're not enough. So we're always overgiving. This is what I see with leaders who um, are frustrated by what their team is not doing, okay? So where you can go after somebody is in in the launch of their business and they're growing, now you're, you're using something to qualify them going forward. So I highly recommend you have anyone doing your business fill in some sort of a form, whether you use a free tool like Google Forms or they're just sending you an email with the answers to these questions. You have something that they're using to check in and, and tell you about the action they're taking in their business before you get on the phone with them. So uh, I know you have something to say. Just wanted to mention, you can find, if you go over to the coaching tools section of my website, wholefit.com, you're gonna find an example under tool four of questions that I ask somebody when they want to hop on the phone with me. I never, ever, ever just hop on the phone with somebody. I have two days a week that I set aside to do a maximum of three calls during those days, three one-on-one -on -one calls. I won't do any more than that. And the people that I'm doing those one-on-one -on -one calls with, they have completed this form for me. Sometimes once they've completed it, I can see that they don't need a call with me. 
I'm not here to remove blocks for them. I'm not here to inspire them and motivate them. That's up to them. And I, I absolutely set this tone within my team that this business is simple. This business is incredible if you're willing to do the work and taking ownership. But I am not here to, to motivate somebody to do it. If they don't want to do it. That's, that's on them, right? So there are times where I won't get on the phone with them, but my, my assistant Jill has just linked up that tool so you guys can see the types of questions that I ask. I highly recommend you incorporate something like this to gauge what you do after somebody has launched their business to understand how often to give your time to them. One last tip, and then I want you to offer your magic. <laughs> One last tip. For those of you who are at around the premier rank, you're getting ready to hit silver. You've got a couple of builders that are, that are with you right now in this business. Now is the time to step more into the role of the leader with your team and to create um, group calls, some sort of mentorship opportunity for your team to come together as a group. The reason this is important at this stage in the game, at premier or silver rank, is because you now need to be looking at things that you can do to increase your your um, efficiency. Um, also, your your you know sharers and builders, people who are doing this business with you, they need to come together and um, inspire each other through their action. Because at some point, I promise you, your leaders are going to get tired of hearing from you. Okay, your your leaders need to hear from each other a little bit more about what they're doing, so they can be inspired by the action of other people and get fresh ideas. If you set up a group call to happen, that magic's gonna happen for that, for that group. And this is one way you can step out of doing individual calls with people is to offer that group call opportunity so that you can say to them every Monday night at eight o'clock, I offer this space for our builders to come together. The people who are committed will show up for that call. The people that were never gonna do the business will not show up for that, okay? So that's just some thoughts I had for you. Hop over to the coaching tools section and think about how you can better, um, better set people up for success. This isn't about qualifying people because you know they're not worth your time if they haven't done these things. What you're actually doing, you're, you're serving them at a much higher level by helping them build confidence through taking action. For themselves. Yeah. And I, as a sort of a side note to that, keep in mind, like as I'm listening to you talk, these are all lessons that you learned going through yeah. this yourself. Oh, like yeah. You were the one doing all this, you know, all the, like you said earlier, all the calls and, and the motive, trying to motivate people. And so these lessons that you're giving are lessons that you learned and now you're giving out and letting to people who are just starting. Like, let's just skip that whole part and go to this part. And I know I said earlier about skipping steps. This is definitely one that you can skip. So I kind of wish I had somebody mentoring me through that in the beginning. Um, unfortunately, okay, um, how do I say this? In doTERRA, it is, um, there is such a beautiful culture of giving, okay? And it tends to put people, it tends to put leaders in positions where they're over giving and they, they become incredibly burnt out. And they become a little bit resentful of their business because they end up feeling like they're the only one doing the things. And I've, I've risen up to be a voice around efficiency, um, management of your time and focus because I realized this in my second year that if we um, are not taking great care of ourselves and not honoring our own time, and not working on our own business more than we are giving to others, if, we're not, if we aren't protecting that, this is not gonna feel good. This is not gonna be freedom for you. And the only reason any of you have started building doTERRA is because you are very attracted to the idea and to the truth, this is true, that this business will create complete time freedom for you. Complete life by design, high level of health, you will not have that if you think this is about overgiving to people, okay? Model it, 80% of your time needs to be focused on your business, on your, your health, on how you show up, how you serve other people, 
through your example, through your light. When I say serve other people, it doesn't mean 80% of the time you're on the phone trying to remove blocks from people. That's their work, just like it's your personal work. Okay? And as we all know, sorry, as we all know, people, if you give people an opportunity to take, 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 they will always take from you. And they're, yeah. what they're taking from you, they're not really going to give back to you. It's just they're just going to keep chewing away and chewing away and chewing away. It's like a puzzle, just taking mm-hmm. pieces of a puzzle. Mm-hmm. And pretty soon you find you, you've got nothing left. And that's where you get resentful. Of like, well, what am I doing here? I'm giving everything to all these people. And what am I getting back? Like, I'm, it's not my job to prop someone up all the time. You know, I got to prop myself up. I have to work oh, on yeah. myself too. I got oh, kids. Yeah. I got to work on my husband. I got to work on my wife. I got to work on my house. Like, I can't keep giving, giving, giving all the time. Like, at some point, someone's got to step up and do it for themselves. And you'll reach a point and you'll know when you're talking to people who those people are. Right? Oh, yeah. Because sometimes that whole business conversation will drift into the personal side. And this is why I can't do this. And this is why I can't do that. And which is fine. I'm not saying that you cut it off and say, okay, I don't want to hear about that. But, you know, when those calls start happening more about why I can't do this and why I didn't show up and what I'm, why I'm not supposed to be here, that's when it's time to really mm-hmm. reassess everything that you're doing and look at what you're giving. You know, be be the truth teller to your team. Um, I want to share a quick example with you. I had a sweetheart of a leader on my team. She's one of my personal world builders. She's currently at Premier, um, wanting to go silver so she can go to leadership. She messaged me last week saying, you know, I just really know I need to be at leadership. Does doTERRA ever make exceptions for people who don't need silver? I wrote her back. I said, absolutely not. They don't make exceptions. And I said to her, what are you willing to double down on right now to hit silver? Because the reality is when you start entering into that, when you start dipping into that space of, oh, I wonder if I could kind of bend the rules or I wonder if somebody would give me this even though I haven't earned it. And, and she, honestly, you guys, like she has the most beautiful heart and I know she's working hard in her business, but the reality is what I knew she needed to hear from me is the truth. There, there are things in her business, in her life that she's not um, honoring. And if you have a goal, if you're, if you're a premier right now and you have a goal of being at leadership, why aren't you doing everything possible to make that happen? You know, um, a friend of mine in doTERRA often shares this example. If you found out that your favorite band was coming to your city this week and doing a concert, I wonder what you would do to make sure that you could be there. Like, would you get a babysitter? Um, would you clear your calendar in some way? Would you cancel on some things to make that happen? Would you Would you buy those four hundred dollars tickets even though you actually don't have the money? Like, there are things that we're always doing to honor priorities that are not life giving, that are not creating our dream life. And when somebody's like this close to being able to go to an event like leadership. And they're, they're now starting to wonder if doTERRA might make an exception so they could be there. Wrong space to be in. Mm-hmm. Wrong space. What, what, you need to, what I knew I needed to tell this person was clear the decks, double down on how you're serving people. If you have one class plan in your house this week, add another two. Start inviting more people. Hire another babysitter. Ask your husband, where, where can we shift some things Get him on board. <laughs> Share with him what you know leadership's going to open up for your family. I mean, honestly, you guys, the people that go to leadership, I don't have the stats in front of me, but they, they like 80% of them rank advanced in their business. I mean, it is such an incredible event. So I wanted to share that example because, you know, you need to be somebody who just like gets right to the point with, with your leaders because if you're 80% focused on your business and you're modeling for your team, let that inspire the right people so that they can see what action looks like. Share it with them, open up the books, show people how you're taking action in your business so that it inspires the right people. Okay, that was a lot of time on that question. That's gonna be the topic of this show for sure. I have a couple other questions I pulled out um, and we'll just fly through these pretty quick. And we do see your comments. Thank you guys for commenting and sharing with each other. Okay. Um, second question was, do you recommend putting all of your eggs in one basket with doTERRA or having multiple streams of income when trying to build to the top? 
Um, do you ever worry about losing it all if something happened to doTERRA? And what would you do if doTERRA vanished tomorrow? Okay, so this is interesting, and, and it, I, I mentioned this earlier. One of the things I love about doTERRA is that they are, they're not focused on creating the most millionaires in the world. They're focused on helping the most people in the world come out of debt and to respect money and to, um, to not be those people that we all know scream new money, okay? Like we all know those people who are just like all of a sudden they hit this rank and everyone in their house quits their job and now they're on the beach and then they're broke a year later. Um, so doTERRA actually by design, I mean the whole compensation plan is set up for lifelong residual income. There's a reason that you don't earn a ton of money right up front because they don't want to program that type of thinking into people. I mean, it's great that you earn a fast start bonus when somebody enrolls. I think that's awesome that you are earning as you're learning right away, but it's not like you're going to be this overnight millionaire in doTERRA. That, that, that is by design. Um, I don't worry about doTERRA going away. If, if doTERRA goes away, um, we have a lot of other things you need to worry about. Because if that day comes, it means the whole healthcare model has shifted to complete control. And so if that day comes, there's gonna be a lot of other problems on our hands, you guys. So um, doTERRA is a very stable company. They were the first and only company to ever be out of debt as fast as they were, to be a billion dollar company as early as they were. Um, and they are really the company in the position to empower the most people in their healthcare and to ultimately um, fix the system as it is today. When you have more empowered people in their healthcare and, you know, and actually changing their own lives, the burden starts to be released, right? So this is, this is what we're living in right now. So I don't have this concern of doTERRA disappearing, but what I wanted to, what I wrote down here was, you know, in the beginning of something new, give it four years of your full focus. Don't, don't be spreading yourself so thin between multiple businesses. I mean, sometimes I hear somebody say, am I allowed to build doTERRA and a leggings business that's also network marketing? And I say, well, you could, but you're not going to be successful. I mean, if you're, if you're spread between yeah, two spread businesses like that, you're not going to do well in either one. Um, a lot of people think they're really great at multitasking. Everybody thinks they're great at multitasking, but actually nobody is. And I'm, I'm a big fan of trying to do multiple things all the time, and I've realized this over time. It's about what you're focused on that grows. So focus on doTERRA, give it a good four years, and give it your best, okay? Because once you're at about the three or four year mark, you're gonna have something that's going to, it's like a spin wheel. You've been investing in, you've been pouring into a community that is thriving. They're gonna to continue to thrive. It's gonna to continue to grow. It's like your health. You know, if somebody's wanting to be healthier, but they're 50 pounds overweight, once they do the things that help them release that 50 pounds of weight, they're not gonna to have to do those things every day for the rest of their life. They're now at a point where their body is strong and healthy and they can have days where they're you know, having pizza and, and it doesn't affect the, the health picture as badly as it did before. So, you know, you need to get to a certain point where it's taken off and it's just, um, it's stable and it's going to take about three or four years. Um, then you're looking at investments and I think it is smart to diversify when you have built up an income for yourself. Everybody today, here are, the, here are the straight up facts. By the time you retire, in order to be able to live the lifestyle that you do today, you're gonna to need at least a million dollars in your bank account. Nobody's talking about this, but this is the truth. And this is why a lot of people are now understanding the power of residual income and opportunities like doTERRA. They're being smart with it. Um, a, friend, a daughter of a family friend of ours She's 21, and we had this conversation the other day where she's like, you know, I can see why it's important for me to start building doTERRA now, because I want to travel. Mm -hmm. I want to have something that um, is there for me even when I'm not working. Like the millennials get this, right? The people who are stuck right now are people in my age group, mid-30s to mid-40s, who are programmed to think that corporations are going to take care of them or, you know, they're, they're in this very static thinking 
um, in, a, in something that's not actually going to take care of them. So, you know, once you've built up a substantial amount of income through something like doTERRA, then yeah, you're gonna wanna, you know, diversify that. So some of you might look at real estate, some of you might look at um, stocks and bonds or things like Bitcoin. I'm, I'm personally going through some schooling right now to better understand that because I, I mean, and I'll tell you right now, this, I'm convinced this is going to be the way that we um, circulate money in the future. There are people who are paying people for services using Bitcoin now. I mean, it's, it's worth you all at some point trying to understand. Um, a good book on this topic, if you guys want to write this down, is called Principles by Ray Dalio. He talks a lot about it. It's an older book, but he talks about the power of investments and, and how to circulate your wealth in that way. Um, so, I mean, be smart with your money. I, I think most of all, don't be that new money person who just goes out and starts buying everything because they have money. Yeah. Like, put money away um, and, and just be smart with how, how you're, you know, how you're growing. Don't, don't quit too soon. Don't be the person who retires at silver rank unless it's because you're gonna double down on your action in your business. Um, so, you know, that, 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 those are my thoughts. I, I don't, and again, what I do wanna circle back to is if we come to a point where doTERRA is no longer, um, the reason some network marketing companies have crumbled and fallen apart is because they were built upon a very shady foundation of people selling a business opportunity without a proper product, of people selling a product that doesn't actually change lives, it's just kind of hypey, um, and they sell and promote this idea of, you know, get rich quick. Um, I can't remember the name of the documentary, but it exposes one of these companies, Herbalife, right? That they were doing a lot of this kind of stuff, and they end up getting into a lot of trouble. So. doTERRA is a very stable company. They're the company a lot of other companies are looking at right now and changing their own um, ways of doing things to model what doTERRA is doing. So, if, I mean, for example, the customer base at doTERRA is way larger than people doing business because the product that people love, it changes lives and they'll, it's their natural healthcare. They'll be using it for the rest of their life. When somebody starts to use essential oils, they don't go back to the harmful ways of being before. So what I want to emphasize here is if we come to the point where doTERRA is no more, we have a lot of other much bigger problems on our hands. I think it comes down to one word and that's humble. Just be humble. If you're successful in this and you're just starting out and you see where this is going, just be humble because that's the only way to live. That's the only way to live when you have success with this stuff because there's no other way. There's no other way to be other than just be humble. Be thankful for what you get and for what you earn because you have earned it and you've done your job and you've done a great job. But, but give, give to other people and show them that you haven't changed. It's, it's, it's part of life. It's very simple. It's a very simple thing. Just, just be very humble. Be humble with your life. Be humble with your family. Be humble with your money and be humble with your time. And if that, you, you can't go wrong there. You, you just can't go wrong, right? Yeah, it makes me think of the power of gratitude in this whole thing. Um, one other clue you'll notice about successful people is they're very grateful people. I had a sweet girl on my team write me a, a card in the mail and I, we were just opening up our, our mail after coming home. Um, and she wrote me a card to thank me for um, uh, somebody I had placed on her team a year ago. And, and this, was, this was a customer ordering the oils and um, she, she wrote me to thank me. And this is a brand new builder, you guys. And it had me thinking about how unusual it was that she took the time to do this because I had actually never received a card like this from a leader and I've, I've been rolled hundreds and hundreds of people in doTERRA and placed them across my team. And, nope, Instagram Live just cut off, one sec. 
And it was such an indicator to me that this girl is going to do so well here because already in the beginning of her business, she was taking the time to express her gratitude to um, anything that had been given to her. And so as a leader of others, pay attention to people on your team who are living from this space and model that for your team. You know, do things, live your life with high integrity behind the scenes. You know, be somebody who, who gives in a way that maybe isn't always obvious. Um, but the practice of that, the practice of being grateful for everything. I mean, it is unbelievable to me how incredible and how healing this business is. I, I am forever grateful that these oils were shared with me. They solved a very real um, problem. I was experiencing as a mother wanting to raise our girls in the healthiest way. They provided me a tool that we will use our entire life. That feeling you cannot put a dollar amount on, but the business, you guys, it is unreal to me how, how people could look at a business like this and not see how powerful and abundant and incredible it is. It's hard for me to understand sometimes why people quit on themselves here when they, the very, the, the only thing we do is provide hope for people, truly. That, that is what we do in a world that is, is just starving for community, starving for solutions, desperate for hope and health and happiness. That is what we do. Why would we ever quit on that, you know? Why wouldn't we double down on that to hit silver? <laughs> so that we could be at an event that's going to increase our impact in a bigger way. So anyway, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna move the other questions I was gonna to take today to next week. We'll open up with a couple questions that we didn't get to on how to overcome the fear of success and um, what I mean when I talk about doing mindset work every day. So I'm gonna, we'll, we'll take those questions next week the topic next week will be simple trigger habits to have in place. And what we mean by that is what's the thing that needs to be in place before the other thing happens so that it just automates and it happens. So I hope you enjoyed today's topic. We'll, we'll call this broadcast. Welcome to that. <laughs> How to spot a leader. Okay. Thanks you guys for joining live. I appreciate you all so much. I love this time with you. Instagram live, this will be up for 24 hours. We'll get this posted up onto iTunes uh, later tonight. So you can check for that tomorrow morning. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you.